Uh, you need to allow me to. Mm, yeah, one moment, please. We are waiting for the children. The student is. Good morning, Daniel. Um, good morning, Mark. Welcome. Okay, Lourdes, ready. Okay, you can start, teacher. Okay, good morning. Okay, Thomas. good morning, teacher. Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning. Okay, so. All right, so let us start. Uh, okay, so today we will be doing these three things, equations and functions, and uh, we'll see their basic definition and notations for both of them, one by one. First, we'll see it for equations, the basic definitions and the notations, and then we'll see it for functions, basic definitions and notation, and uh, then we will see the composite and the inverse functions, and at the end, we will see about the transformation of the graphs. Okay, so... All right, so let's start with the definition of equation. This is our first topic for the day. Uh, so this is our topic one. Doing, okay. Mathematically, an equation can be defined as a statement that supports the equality of two expressions which are connected by the equal sign. For example, 2x minus 5 equals to 13. So we have two expressions, one expression on the left side and one expression on the right side. And, they, and when both of these expressions are equal, we call it an equation. So... Uh, here with the two x okay so the sign that connects this expression is this is the equality sign so where we see this sign connecting the two uh, two expressions we call that an equation so okay, okay so let's say there there is are like the parts of an equation let's say i have just for example i have an equation 2x minus 5 equals to 13 as you could see so now here, 
this this whole thing this whole thing is a term this whole thing is a term okay this one also a term these ones are terms how we identify that it is a term we identify it by looking at that where is the plus and the minus sign in between them like 2x these are not two terms this is one term because we don't see the plus or the minus sign between them so when we see a plus minus sign between them then we know that okay one term is ending here and this one is the next term okay. so this this thing the, these ones plus minus addition division subtraction whatever these are we call them operators these are the operators and uh, okay so this one is the variable and the numbers the numbers are called this one which is without the variable like it do not have any variable with it we call them constants 5 is a constant 13 is a constant because this term cannot change like 5 will remain 5 13 will remain 13 but, but this 2x it will change depending on x like if we will change the x then it will also change this term so this is a variable right and, and the number with the variable is called the coefficient and this whole thing we call this an expression and this is also an expression they are connected by the relation of equality so that's basically an equation Okay, so there is a difference, a little bit of difference between an expression and an equation. Okay, so for expression, it's true for all the possible values of x. Let's say we had 2x plus 3. It do not have any, like whatever the x value that are allowed, you can just put them in. And it is true. It, have, it is not false for anything. You can put all the possible x values in it and the expression is true. Okay, so the common key, like words that we can see to that are used when we have an expression is like simplify the expression expand the expression factor, factorize the expression so these are the words like that where we use them for the expressions let's say 8x plus 5y minus 3x minus 5 so let's say it can be like simplify for this one simplify this right so simplify means like we can we have just have to combine the like terms so let's say this is 8x minus 3x. We rewrite it and then just subtract. So it's like 5x plus 5y minus 5. And then we can take the 5 common. All right. So x plus y minus 1. So like that. So it's simplified, a little bit of factorized. So these are the work things that we use for expressions. But this is an, in, this is an equation here. This have an equality sign there. So it's just true for some particular values. When it's an equation, it, it can be true for more than one value, but usually it's true for some particular values. Like for example, this one, uh, we have five X plus four equals to X. This one is true. We, we, we like combine that, we subtract the X, move the four to the other side. So four X equals to negative four, so X equals to so this one is true only when the x is equals to negative one. But this one is true for all the values of x and the y that are possible there that we can use. Okay, now there, now there is, let's see some different types of equations that we can, that we normally see. There is many different types, but we'll just cover some common types of equations that we will normally see the first one is a linear equation that we all that we did i think last week as well or linear inequalities before last week. each term involved in the linear equation is either a constant or a single variable or a product of a constant like y equals to mx plus c like each term have one bit the power of variable is one Do you have any question, Anil? Um, I have a question. Yes. So, um, basically, this is like 
um, combining like terms? Combining like terms? Or mm -hmm. um, what operation is this? Oh, this is the equations. These are the equations. They, they use the equal sign. So the left side of the expression, this, this left expression should be equals to the right expression. That's what uh, equation means. Yeah. When we combine the terms, you can combine the terms on left side, you can combine the terms on right side, you, you can combine them on one side. But the main thing is this equal sign. So when we will see this equal sign, that means it's an equation. Like the linear equations that we just learned before, the equation of a line, y equals to mx plus c, right? So like there. So let's say it, it's it's like m is the slope and c is the y-intercept. Let's say we have something like this. So their their graph, its graph looks like let's say some graph some of some random line. It looks like this. So that's an this this line is represented by this equation. Okay, it's true for some particular values of x and y. It's not true for all the values of x and y like for example this one 10x minus 80 is a equation this is the equation in one variable right this one is an equation in two variables 9x plus 6y minus 82 equals to zero you see the power the power of x is x y they are they are one you will not see x y term in this in these kind of equations you will not see x y term because its power is combined like you check the power combined one plus one its power is two its second degree term so all the terms are one degree first degree terms products with so in this case, of, that it says nine x plus six y what are you supposed to do oh you like it's the equation of line like you can you can convert it into line intercept form or you can convert it into standard form of line like this or like you could have it like and then you can divide it by the uh, six so y equals to nine that night so like this and then you can then then you can write uh, then you can see that this equation is true only for some particular values of x when you will put some particular value of x you will get only some particular values of y for which these equations will be true next one is the, like this one is next thing after linear equations is the quadratic equations and uh, these are the second degree terms you see the x squared it have a second degree term the exponent is two they are like the parabolas let's say you might have seen the graph like this for parabolas, something like that. They are the x squared terms. So, so here, the standard form of an quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. That's in one variable. You can have it in two variable, x squared plus uh, xy plus y squared, like that. You can have like these equations. These are the equations. And this is the standard form for like that we normally use ax squared plus bx plus c. So the quadrant for which we use the quadratic formula as well. So the, the coefficients, the a, b, and c, these are the coefficients, and the x and the y are the variables. Uh, these are just like the type, different types of quad, uh, like equations that you can encounter. Let's say then there's a radical equations is a variable lying inside a square root symbol. It can be square root, cube root, or any root, right? It's, it's not just the square root. Or you can say that the maximum exponent, oh, so like these are the radical ones. These are the radical ones, the square root of a plus 10 equals 26. Like these kind of equations where we have the square roots, we can have cubic roots, like those. So these are the radical equations that we have. And then exponential, equations exponential equations like the one that we that have the powers of something like a to the power x a to the power x equals to b something like that a is a constant b is a constant and x is a variable so the, these kind of equations because they are equal sign these are the exponential equations right like 8 a to the power x is equals to 32 so what power of we can like in this question 
basically if they ask us to solve we need to tell what power of 8 gives us 32 or let's say instead of 8 let's make it easy Four. let's say i write it two to the no 8 to the power 4 is not 32 it's not no, Let's sorry, I got confused. Four, I thought you were talking about multiplication. Sorry, you're talking about square roots. My bad. I got confused. No, it's 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 the multiplications, but it's like eight to the power x equals to thirty two, like that. So it means we need to know what power, what power yeah, of yeah, like saying eight to the power two is sixty four. Yes, yes. So it's it's not eight to the power of two actually, basically. Okay? Yeah. So it's like. Mm -hmm. So we can rewrite it as like two to the power three. That is eight. Eight. Yeah. And then thirty-two. Right now, now we need to like see. Now it's two to the power three x equals to thirty-two. Now we need to see what number here we put in x that will make it thirty-two. So like two to the power six is thirty-two. Right. Yep. So we can have like x as two here. So like, but with the power of two, two to the power six is 32. So like that, we need to change it. So, okay. Okay, then, then this is just an example as well. A rational equation. Rational equations are like, in which you have the x, the, the powers like this, or you can have like two uh, x plus three over x equals to seven, something like that, or seven over y, something like that. These are the, rational expressions because these are the rational numbers or not real numbers we don't have the powers which are exponents are we have negative exponents and the exponents that are in the fractions so these are the rational expressions because they include the rational numbers these are the rational numbers instead of integers or polynomials okay now we are moving on to functions first we did was the equations we talked about the equations their basic notation and some types and some definitions for the equations and now we are looking at the functions what is a function and uh, then we will see its basic it's kind of the, it's the part of the same topic that we was doing the first one the equations and the functions their notations and basic definition so we will see what is a function and how we can see if something is a function or not and what is the criteria for a function what is its definition so let the, let's start with the first a function is a process associate each element a of a non-empty set a at least a single element b of another non-empty set b so what we need is first of all to make a function we need two sets we need two sets a and set b we need two sets the function is kind of a machine okay, which take the inputs from the set a let's say this is f the function it takes the input from the set a it processes it whatever it do whatever the machine do is whatever its function it do that and then it gives the result from something in the set b so that's what basically it do so every like we and then we have some criteria for the function that we see next that which sets or which things make it a function so a relation f so it's a relation between a and b the two sets f is a relation it's a it's a relation between a and b it's a relation between a and b okay. so the set of a is this this from where we are taking the inputs is the domain and the range and the set outputs is like it have it have like people use it different names they can sometimes call it codomain they can call it range or they can also use the word image so these are all the words for the range like range codomain and image this is the set for outputs okay so let's say we how we write like function a b the set a b such that for all a that belongs to this the small a are the elements that belongs to this set a input set 
and the B is the member of this set. B belongs to this set, this bigger B set. So like the B are the members that belongs to set B. So it takes one input and map it. You can say map it, you can say image it. A function is also called a map. A function is also called a map. It maps an input to an output. It, you can say, uh, and it gives, you can, the words can say that it gives you an image of a pre-image. The things that are in the domain are called pre-image as well. Okay, so when, when a relation is a function, a relation is said to be a function if every element of set A has one and only one image in set B. Let's say we have three things here, one, two, let's say one, two, three, and there is A, B, C, D, E, like this. The function, what does it, the function is, I, I decide the rule, that one will be the A, two will be B, if I input the three, I will get the C, all right? So now I know, let's say I have, I have made a machine. Whenever I press one, the answer I get is A. When I press two, the answer is B. Whenever I press three, the answer is C. So, so it's a, it's a well-defined rule. I have a rule. Whenever I will press three, I will get C. But let's say what happened is this three also goes on to D. Okay. Now, what ha what has this machine do? One time I press the three, it gives me the answer as C. Next time I press the D or three, it gives me the answer as D. Let's say this is our coffee machine. All right. So these are the different type three buttons, and these are the different type of coffees. Okay. So let's say one. One time you press the three and you get something let's say cold coffee and next time you press the same button three on the machine and you get a cappuccino something like that okay you will never buy that machine that that do everything with its own will you will only you will want something that gives you one specific output unique output like once if you press one input you get one output every time the same so one input cannot go in on to more than one outputs okay like it's not like if we write it in set notation or in table form let's say if i write it in like this then one a it's not possible that one gives me a and then one also gives me b that's not a function this machine this this is not a function this is a relation but this relation is not a function okay. and another thing for the domain is, like for the function is all the elements that are the member of that set a the domain they should if we input them we should get some output for it it's not like that that we leave the three here and we don't know the three is here in this set but it's not mapped on any output it's not possible it's not then it's not a function either because we don't know that what will have like where this three goes to on which number this three will go to if we press the three because it have no fun like this in it's it's an input for it but it don't give any output so even then in that case it's not a function so all the input elements should give us an answer which is one answer one answer for one input but it's okay if we have more than one answer for different outputs let's say like this let's say uh, Let's say we are we have make a machine we make a function which tells us the age which tells us the age of the which tells us the age of the students all right when we enter the name all right so let's say here they ask you enter name okay and it processes it and it gives you the age out. You, you you press you enter your name enter your student's name let's say you enter your one student name and you get like enter your student name a you get the age 13. you enter the student name b you get the age 14. but at the same time you get the age 14 16 18. how you will know that what is the age of the student b if it's giving you more than one answer 
then it's not a machine it's not a function it's not a, there's no set rule for it because if there would be a set rule then there will be only one answer for each input but it's okay that more than two students have the same age let's say there is 10 students in the class that have the same age 14 that's okay that's completely fine it makes sense different students can have same age but one student cannot have multiple ages at the same time so the function a to b okay so this is just everything that i explained here okay so they are just telling us now these are a function in maths can represent it as the set of ordered pairs like a b or x y okay? the x are the inputs inputs and outputs we can we can represent the function in this form we can write the function in arrow form from a to b that's the arrow diagram we can use the table like before let's say we have a function x squared the function is f of x equals to x squared this is a general notation that we use for function let's say we can use it here this is x this is y so when x is one we get y as one when x is zero y as zero when x is two is four because we are doing the squares when x is three y is nine so like this so we can have table form even we can have the graphical form let's say this one it have a graph x squared like this we can represent the function by the graph by the table by the arrow diagram by the by this notations right like that so f of x equals to x squared in the general manner to represent a function it is said to it is said as f of this thing is read as f of x equals to x squared okay. this is represented as f you can also write it it in like this way the first set notation with the ordered pairs okay the domain for this set is one two three the range for this set is one four nine just this is just uh, the same diagram that we used before it's it's also okay if there is some free elements in the range it's not compulsory that whole range is covered but the whole domain should be covered and let's say there is one more thing that is left let's say if we have a graph of any random function let's say I have a function like this how we can see how we can decide if it is a function or not to do that you what you do is you draw you just imagine in your mind the vertical lines over the graph you imagine the vertical lines over the graph if the lines at all the place everywhere where you can think of it never cross the graph twice if the lines never cross the graph twice then it's a function it's called horizontal line test oh sorry vertical line test my bad vertical line test if the vertical line only cross the graph at once then it's a function let's say i have a graph which looks like this that's it looks like that. now if you see if i draw the vertical lines on it okay there's there's no problem here it's not crossing not crossing not crossing but as I cross it here, you see it crossing the graph at two points. The x value is the input. This is the x. These are the y values. You see one x value corresponds to two y values. So then this, this curve is not the graph of any function. It's not the graph of a function. It can be graph of anything, but it's not the graph of the function. So this is the vertical line test. If you have given a graph, you can just draw the vertical line. And you can see if the vertical line crosses the graph more than once, then it's not a function. Okay, so now again, like these are the some types of the functions. Um, okay, 
so these ones are like kind of a little different than the types of the equation okay but the function a to b is said to be one to one it's a one to one function or it's called injective function if the image of distinct elements of a under f are distinct like the the images images are the range the element of range if it only if there is one element from the domain that joins with one element from the range only one and distinct elements then it's a one to one like the first one you see one element from the domain joins with one element of the range one element of room like range domain range so this is one to one for one element of input there is one element of output then we have the next one is that we have is one to many one to many oh, okay okay i can explain from there that's it many so this one is many to one the next one that we have here is many to one means the multiple input values the multiple values from the input like say one two like these two values a and b a and b are joining one element in the so they belong to x so this is hmm? uh, they yes, belong to a, x a, no it's not like belongs to belongs to does not mean like that let's say this is the set a this is the set b belongs to means that that the small a it belongs to the set a like it is the member it is the member of this family it is the member of this set that's what it means belongs to this one is maps a maps to b or oh sorry not b like let's say x a maps to x or you can say x is the image of a under the function f of x let's say this is a function f of x that we have here a function so we can say x is the image of a or we can say a maps to x that's that's what we use the words for for this belongs to means that they are the member of that set so the next one is so basically mm -hmm. just connected Sorry, what? Um, in many to one, um, mm -hmm. A is connected to X, right? A, the, the, the correct word that you want to say is A maps to X. A maps to X. Or you can say X is the image of A. Or you can say A goes to X. So these ones are the functions one to one is a function many to one is a function they work for it all right and then these are the non-function like one to many obviously one input cannot go to multiple output we all we already saw this that one to many is not a kind of a function this is not a function or many to many like many to many it's also not a function, a function. so now let's uh look here one second. now look here as well so now let's see here so first we saw that one to one the word for one to one is also called injective okay if the images of a distinct element of a under f are distinct for every a b in a like a b they are from the set a inputs f of a f is a function we apply the function to the a and then it should be equals to f of b if f of a and f of b there is two inputs a and b 
A and B, two inputs are there. We applied the function and their answers are equal. Okay. The f of A is equals to f of B. It means, it means, it implies that the A must be equal to B. Then it's a one to one. One to one means if the answer of two inputs is equal, it means those inputs were the same. They were equal. That's what the one to one means. Otherwise, it is many to one, right? Otherwise, it can be many to one. Okay. The next thing is a function f a to b is said to be on to. On to means it like covers, it is on to the b, like it covers the whole domain, whole range, whole element of range. There is no free element in the range. There is no free element in the range. Let's say we have one, two, three. Let's say this is a, b. So it's a function. Okay, one. Yes, it's a function and it is a on to function. On to function. On to means this covers this whole range. If the whole of the range is covered and there's no free element there left, then it's a on to. Okay. Or you can say that for every element in B in the range, there is some element in the A that goes to that element in the B. Okay. So then another word for um, okay. Then if something is on to and one to one, if a function is on to and one to one, okay, if one to one and on to or bijective, the on to functions are also called the bijective, then f is like it's it's both it's both okay so like if a function is one to one and on to then it's called bijective so it's a bijective function if it is one to one and on to okay so now we are moving to our next topic which is composite functions and so this is our second topic in the list composite function and uh um you missed the p right there it says composite function sorry um it says composite function right oh, up I, there it's bad it's bad it's spelling mistake sorry thank you for correcting it's it's composite functions i i missed the p sorry composite functions so now composite function means like, let's say we have seen that we can add two functions, we can subtract two functions, we multiply them, we divide them. Now this is something which we do not, we're not multiplying, we're not dividing, or we are not adding or subtracting them. But what we are doing is, it's like a, it's like, um, like let's say it's like kind of a factory, okay? There's, there's different machines. Let's say we have, this is machine F. The, like this is the input where you put something into the input. This is the machine, a, like inputs are X, right? You put the inputs in it, X. You put the inputs there. This is the machine, the first machine, right? What does it do? It takes the input, right? Whatever you had, let's say let's say we are making something all right we are cooking or it's it's like a baking machine or something let's say it takes the input it takes some grains or whatever it grinds it makes some flour or something whatever then it gives us an output right these are the outputs for that inputs right? this is the box of outputs we put in an input into the first function it gives an now let's say we now what we do is we take this output and feed it to the next machine now what we do is we feed it to the next machine right the outputs of the first machine outputs of the first function we feed them to the second function that is what is kind of the composite function right so whatever the answers it get us like whatever the answers it will give us out, that will be the final answers. So, okay, so 
let a f a to b and g b to c be two functions we have two functions okay f and g then the composition of f and g is denoted as f of g sorry f of g okay and then the variable whatever the variable we have if the variable is x we write it as x or you can write it as f of g this this is not o but a small circle like that which is read as f of oh so there, this, there's also one just one f of g so we read that f of g it's read as like f the input of f is the function g okay and then x x belongs to a whatever the set is whatever the domain is x belongs to the inputs uh, okay let's see some example and then we'll also uh, see quickly a little bit of if we get the time for the domain and range for this so let's say we have a function here let us consider an example of two functions f of x and g of x so f of x is x plus one this is our first function which is x plus one and the second function is g of x is x squared then f of g of x like f of g which we are trying to find is f of g of x that's how we will write it so what is the g of x now the g of x is equals to x squared so what you do you plug in the value for g of x which is x squared now the input is not x the input is x squared for the x okay so what was the x what is the function f this is the function f here f of x equals to x plus one so what we do here now we have f of x squared that will be x squared plus one we will, we will replace the x by the x squared so this is the this is the um, that's what we get for that's what we get for f of g of x this is the one of the composition f of g of x all right so f of g of x is this one here now what we do is we do the now next one is we do g of f of x like now we take the now we are doing g of f of x here g of f of x now what we're doing we are, we are first feeding the x to the uh, f the function f we get its own output and then we feed it to the g like this g of f of x here see g of f of x here okay so now then the g of f of x is equals to what is the f of x you put that here x plus one okay and then you use the function x plus one squared because the g of x is x squared now it will be x plus one squared which will become x squared plus two x plus one okay so you can see that the f of g of x and g of f of x they are different so you can see that f of g G is not the same as g of x you can also see it in you can think in real world scenario that if you have two machines you first put your input into first machine and you do something and then you put it into second machine and it do something different you will not get the same result if you put the same thing into the second machine first and then put it back into the first machine right so it's the same like the functions and also one more thing about the domain and the range is also let's say when we do the composition function we get x squared plus one but we will not see the domain of the answer we will not see the domain of the answer we will see the domain of the original functions f of x and g of x all right because let's say we have two machines all right we are making something uh, so the first machine cannot take sugar also the second machine can take the sugar in but the first machine cannot first function machine cannot take the sugar so if you cannot put the sugar into the first machine then whatever the output you will get that will not have sugar in it because you feed the output 
from the first machine so second machine will never get the sugar as well although you can put in it it's allowed to put in into the second machine but since you are putting the input into the second machines that you get from the first one and the first one cannot have sugar so you cannot put the sugar into the second one so you look at the original functions for the domain right let's say i have two functions f of x equals to square root of x and f and g of x equals to x squared g of x equals to x squared although the second function x squared it can take all the values but this one this one it cannot take the negative values right so g of f of x the domain for this one is only when x is greater than or equal to zero it cannot take negative values so x squared can take negative values but the other one that is going into the input that cannot have the negative values so you cannot take the negative values for this one so you take the domain depending on what you are giving it in, as input you look at that function the input function you look at the domain of that and then you solve it and then at the end you again look at the domain of the final answer okay now the next thing is an inverse function inverse function is like it it's it's not possible to get the inverse of every function the inverse of only one to one functions exist if the function is one to one then you can find its inverse and the rule is that if you do f of g of x the answer should be x and g of f of x the answer should be x okay inverse functions no no there is nothing like a outverse function no <laughs> it's the inverse function inverse means the opposite like it cancels it out okay it's not in it does not means like in in means something inside it it's not like that yeah like in, saying input or, and out versus like saying output not yeah yes like it's like the they have the same like inverse function like they cancel out each other basically the concept is let's say x squared and x squared and square root of x they are kind of for some values they are the inverse functions all right let's say if you have because like whatever you like x but like whatever the x squared did the square root of x undo it let's say i put in two into the x squared i get the answer as four now if i will do the square root of four i will get back two so you see i whatever the x squared did you inverse it of x reversed it it put it back so they, they are the inverse function they cancel out the effect of each other so the criteria is that how we can check if two functions are inverse we do the composition composition of those functions f of g of x and g of f of x and the answer for both of them should be x let's say okay i uh, have only 10 minutes so let's I'm just skipping this one and let's uh, do the next example here. Let's say I have two functions, f of x and g of x. Now I want to check if they are inverse or not, if they are inverse functions of each other or not. So what we do is we do f of g of x, right? So it means f of g of x like that. And what is f of g of x function? That, that goes here cube root of x minus 2 and now we substitute it into the x the input will go here so that will be equals to cube root of x minus 2 to the power 3 plus 2 you do the cube cube root cancels out x minus 2 plus 2 so you got x okay so f of x is equals to f of g of x is equals to x we got the first condition true now we need to check is g of f of x so that is g you write it like this f of x so what is the f of x the input x to f of x is equals to x cube plus 3 2 like that then you take the g here 
you substitute in the x here because when it when the input was x it was x there now the input is x cube plus 2 so it should be x cube plus 2 here we replace the x by the x cube plus 2 so you see uh, x cube plus 2 minus 2 which cancels out and then cube root of x cube is x so yes we get in this both scenarios we get that so these two are the inverse functions and there is one more thing about the inverse functions is let's say if we graph them let's say the logarithm the logarithmic function log functions and exponential functions they are log and exponential they are also the inverse of each other log and exponents are also the inverse of each other let's say we have some so if we have the line y equals to x let's say this is the line y equals to x so let's say the exponential function we have 2 to the power x right this is an exponential function which looks like something like this so this line will mirror it this line will exactly mirror it and the logarithmic function will look like oh sorry the logarithmic function will look like it will look exactly mirror like like also my drawing will not look like exactly like a mirror image but you can see that this line in the middle behaves like a mirror so when you graph the inverse functions when you graph the inverse functions they look like the this line behaves like a mirror in the middle y equals to x okay so now the last thing is this is the third one last topic for now okay. so the transformation of graphs let's say we have a graph and we want to transform it we want to move it up down left right do something flip it reflect it shrink it expand it so let's start from the first one let's say the g of x is we have f of x minus h plus k right so this h here it moves it horizontally the h moves it horizontally if if this one like x minus h x minus h okay so if this x here is if this h is uh, let's say a negative number let's say x minus 2 like this f of x minus 2 plus something right so then this if h is greater than 0 then it moves that many units to the uh, okay it moves it right if h is less than zero it moves left let's say if this k is greater than zero k is greater than zero then it moves up that many units and if that k is less than zero then it moves that many units down right vertical units this k here so then g of x is minus f of x it's reflected in the x-axis if you multiply the function by a negative it's reflected over the x-axis let's say we have the function f of x equals to x squared so if we multiply it with the negative so negative of f of x will be equals to negative x squared so the f of x looks like this but the negative of f of x will look like this it will be reflected over the x-axis so, but if you put the negative inside, like you replace the x by the negative x, then it will be reflected across the y-axis. Let's say the function was like, uh, let's say the function was like this, then it will be reflected and it will become reflected over the y-axis, something like that, the graph. Then this is c times f of x. If you multiply the, the function, the graph of the function by some number c, and c is greater than one then it's vertical stretch by the factor of c like it's being stretched vertically like let's say before if it was like this much vertically then it will be then it will be in the same time it will be vertically stretched like this this is a vertical stretch 
from this way to this way and if you go from down to up, like from down to up that's a vertical shrink if it is in between if the if you multiply the function or the graph by something which is in between zero and one let's say one half one third then it's a shrink and at the end here it's k times x if you multiply input the inside input by some number k then it's a horizontal stretch by the factor of one over k if it is if the k is in between zero and one let's say if k is one half you multiply the x by the one half then it's a vertical stretch it's opposite in case of horizontal if you multiply by a fraction a number in between zero to one and if you multiply it with number which is k greater than one then it's a vertical shrink by the factor of one over k you it's not the it's not vertical shrink or vertical stretch by the factor of k but instead it's the vertical shrink and vertical stretch by the factor of one over k let me uh, show you some uh, example actual on yes. This is a graphing calculator, Desmos, that you can even use for yourself. Let's say my function is f of x is equals to square root of, I, I, I'm just writing it power one half. Yeah, that's that's what the square root means. Yeah, like f of x is square root of x. Now I want to, okay, just tell me, every one of you, just tell me what should I do with it? You want to move it right, left, up, down, Tell, okay, first of all, how many units should we move it right? If we want to move it right, what we need to do? Hmm? We need to subtract. Let's say I subtract three. You see, it moved three units right. Okay, I subtracted three in f of x. It moved three units to the right. Let's say I want to move it two units up. So I need to add two outside you see it moved up three right two up okay let's say we want to reflect it reflect it across the y-axis let's multiply it with the then then we have to multiply the whole thing with the negative right let's see here you see it's not the actual reflection if we want to reflect it then what we need to do is we need to take another step and reflect the g because now our function is g of x now we need to write like h of x a new function which is equals to the reflection of the function g of x across the x-axis see like this if we want to reflect it across the y-axis then what we do is we put the negative inside you see it's reflected across the y-axis we can also stretch it vertical like let's say we shrink it vertically if I put the five here, it, it's a shrink. See the X values, if you will see it's shrinked, the X values. If I want to stretch it by X, let's say one over five. Oh, you can't even see it now because it's stretched. And it's here. See? So, like that, X values are stretched. Now, now whatever like whatever the answer was at uh, like four, now the same answer is at sixteen or twenty. It's stretched on the x-axis. Now let's just like you stretch it vertically. Let's say if I multiply it with three, you see it's vertically stretched. Before it was covering this much portion vertically in this values of x. Now it's covering this much portion of y. So it's the vertically stretched if we divide it by some number let's say one over three or let's say one over three. Oh, wait okay you see now the x now on the same time in the same area where it was taking this much space on the y-axis now it's just taking a dot like very small space on the y-axis so it's vertically shrink all right okay so you can uh, try yourself like write any function try to move it right left up down 
this is a website that you can use it's desmos okay so you can use it you can write your own function on graph and then you can just play with it move it up down like left do the translation reflection you can do combinations of it is it okay so is it okay with everyone yes teacher it's clear you yes teacher okay excellent guys all right okay Okay, it's so, uh, an excellent class. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, thank you for being here. Um, wonderful day to all of you. Um, keep in for next class, okay? Have a wonderful day, guys. And teach us up. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, teacher. Bye, Daniel, Paul. Bye, Mark, Matthew, Rick. Bye-bye.